Hi everyone, I'm coming to you and welcome to another video. This video is all about installing the latest Marlin 2.0 firmware on your 3D printer using Platform.io. We'll be installing it on my ANET A2 printer running an ANET mainboard, but the guide will principally still work for all the other machines as well. I have already created a video about installing Marlin on an ANET board using Arduino IDE, so if you're interested, head up to the top right corner and check it out. The first thing we want to do is to set up our software. First, we need to install Platform.io. It's an open source microcontroller development environment supporting a ton of microcontroller platforms. But the cool thing or the coolest thing about it is that you can install it on top of your favorite IDE as an extension. I'm going to install it to Visual Studio Code. So to do this is relatively simple. Head to the extension tabs, search for Platform.io and hit install. It might take some while. We also need the latest release of Marlin. For this, head over to the GitHub repo and download the latest 2.0 branch. After extracting, open a new folder with Visual Studio Code. Platform.io should notice it right away and prepares everything for you. To make life easy for us, we want to start off with an example configuration. There are now a ton of them provided in an extra repo. I have an ANET A2 Plus, so I can take the appropriate example configuration files and replace the original ones with those. The first thing we should do is to compile the firmware right away to see whether the default configuration actually works. As expected, we got an error complaining about the wrong target environment set. So let's quickly head over to the platform.io config file and select Melsi as our target environment. After hitting compile once again, another error hits us. This time it originates from an outdated example configuration as some research indicated. So I had to adapt the bump offset values in the advanced config to fix it. Yeah, no errors, awesome. But before we can start uploading, it's always wise to take a quick look through the configuration file and adapt a few things here and there. So what I adapted is the maximum temperature of the extruder and the bed. I changed the breed ABS config and adapted it to my PETG settings, as I don't really breed ABS currently. And I also verified that the LCD screen is the correct one. Now, as the compilation is still successful, let's give it a first try. Uploading the configuration is actually very simple. All we need to do is to connect to the printer using a USB cable and then hit the upload button. The first thing I can recommend you to do after a firmware upgrade is to test out whether the axes still work. Be aware that the extruder only moves if it's heated up above a selected minimum temperature, which is 170 degrees by default. In my case, all the axes were inverted. Yay! So let's change that real quick. While we are already digging through the configuration, I thought it's time to re-enable the filament runner sensor. I have created my own video about that explaining the process in detail. Take a look at it if you are interested how it works and what I am doing or about to do. But real quick, I start by defining the filament sensor pin instead of the servo zero pin directly in the ANET board file. Then I uncomment the filament sensor definition. The current default settings seem to suffice my setup. For it to work, two more things, namely the advanced boss and nozzle bug feature need to be enabled and configured. In my case, the default configuration seemed to be fitting very much, except I disabled the filament loading and unloading. That should be it, and it also compiles. After uploading and testing through the entire setup, I figured that for me the most important option, namely SD printing, was disabled, so let's quickly enable that as well. After enabling this, everything seems to work out just fine for me, so that I am ready for the next print. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope that you liked this video and found it helpful. If you got any questions or ran into some issues, let me know down below. I'm trying to get back to you as soon as possible. 
So thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye.